So I've previously made a video answering this question, but it was brought to my attention from one of the comments that I made an error in my trigonometry. So I apologize if you've already seen that video, but what I've decided to do is remake and re-upload the correct way to answer this question. So without further ado, let's begin by relabeling the diagram. And what I have here are these black and red lines, because what I want to ultimately prove is that this angle where the cursor is pointed at is congruent to the angle theta, because this angle theta and this angle right here are corresponding angles. This means that they are congruent. This angle and this angle right here are opposite angles. So therefore, they are also congruent. And lastly, this angle right here and this angle are alternating interior angles. So therefore, they are also congruent. This will later come in handy when we start using some trigonometry to solve this question. So what I've gone ahead and done here is created this triangle, this right triangle. You also notice this symbol right here. I've denoted this angle using the symbol phi, and you spell that P-H-I. We'll further label this triangle by using the letter C to denote the hypotenuse right here. We'll use the letter B to denote the leg of this triangle, and the height will be denoted using the letter H. Now recall the path difference formula for destructive interference. And that formula states that the difference in path length is equal to m plus one half times lambda. And the m value is simply an integer, a whole integer value. The next thing we need to figure out is what is our delta r value. So we have two paths here. We have the direct path and the reflected path. We need to figure out if the reflected path is larger in length or if the direct path is larger in length. In this situation, the reflected path is larger in length because the direct path is typically the shortest distance from A to B, hence why it's called the direct path. The reflected path is labeled C and the direct path is labeled B. So we can go ahead and substitute this in and we get that C minus B is equal to M plus one half times lambda. Next, I want you to focus your attention on this black triangle right here. We'll use some trigonometry to solve for the sine of phi, and we get that the sine of phi is equal to b over c. We can rearrange that expression, and we can solve for b, and we get that b is equal to c times sine of phi. With that newfound relationship in mind, we can go ahead and substitute in the b value that we came across in this equation right here. We get that c minus c times sine of phi is equal to m plus one half times lambda. We'll go ahead and simplify this expression by factoring out the c variable and substituting in the value of zero for m. The reason I use the value of zero for m is because of this statement right here. It says the first minimum of destructive interference occurs when the star is 25 degrees above the horizon. In order to achieve the first minimum, we would need our m value to be zero. Next, direct your attention to this black triangle right over here. What we need to do now is solve for the sine of the angle theta. And we get that sine of theta is equal to h over c. We can rearrange this and get that c is equal to h over sine of theta. With that newfound relationship, we can go ahead and make a substitution. And we get that h over sine theta times 1 minus sine of phi is equal to lambda divided by 2. We can go ahead and rearrange this equation and we can solve for the height. Now we have all of the pieces of information needed to solve for the height except the angle phi. So we need to find out what the measurement of that angle is. Focus your attention on this black triangle once again and recall that all angles of a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. With that in mind, we can solve the measurement of the angle phi and we already know what theta is and we're given that theta is 25 degrees. 
So after making some rearrangements, we can get that the angle phi is 40 degrees. So we now have enough information to solve for the height. Now we go ahead and plug in the values and we can get that the height of the cliff is 148 meters. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.